Welcome to Bitcoin for Beginners Part 2. Bitcoin is an online virtual currency that has increased in value by more than $200 a coin since I last released Part 1 of this video series. A Bitcoin today is now worth over $300. Okay, this may change by the time you watch this video, but I wanted to address some of the most common questions that I received in Part 1. Let you know some of the alternatives for the Bitcoin wallet because a lot of people had some issues syncing to the network and getting that to work. Also, I wanted to show you another mining program that you can try in case you're having trouble with GUI Miner. You can see I'm running GUI Miner right here. I also wanted to show you a miner that the Mac users can use, so I'll be going over that as well. Everything that I'm going to cover will be in the video description, so if you'd like to skip the video and play around with this stuff, by all means go ahead. If you're staying, let's get started. People were reporting that they were having issues with their Bitcoin wallet. Either they were having issues running the program on their computer, or that it was taking too long to sync and never fully syncing up to the Bitcoin network. Multibit is a popular Bitcoin wallet. It's going to work a little bit better on your system, especially for the people that were unable to get the original Bitcoin wallet working. Now, Multibit works for Mac, PC, and Linux, so it covers everybody. And one of the best things about it is that you can password protect your wallet. Now I want to make a side note, I was unable to export my wallet from Bitcoin QT and import it into Multibit, but that's okay because we can just simply send ourselves the coins from this wallet to this wallet. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Here's my old Bitcoin wallet. This is the wallet that I showed in video number one. Now to transfer money from this wallet to Multibit, I'll just copy this address. And I will click on send coins and I'll pay to and I'll paste my address and I'll give this a label and I'll call it transfer. And under the amount, I'm going to take my entire balance, which isn't very much, but nevertheless, I'll copy that and I'll paste it there. And this is going to be in Bitcoin. And then I'll click on the send button. Are you sure you want to send to the following address? Yes. Okay, we get a little notification down here, gives us the date, the amount, it's a negative, you can see sent, address, transfer, up, oh, and there it is right there, it just transferred, it's actually worth $11.57, that's awesome, did not know that. Um, so that's how you would transfer money from one wallet to another wallet, and if we click on the transactions tab, we can see the transaction, we can see all the information about it, it basically just confirms that we transferred that amount of money. Now that I transferred money from one wallet to another wallet, I'm going to add a password to my wallet. And I can do that very easily by just selecting File, Add Password, and I can add a password. I'm going to type this in twice. See where it says keep your password safe? You need this password to spend your Bitcoin, and it cannot be recovered if lost. So it's very, very, very important that you do not lose this password. You write it down, and you save it. Because if you lose your password, you're most likely going to lose your money. So now that I've put my password in both fields, and they're the same, I can add password to wallet. And the password was added successfully. So now my wallet is password protected. Moving forward, because a lot of people were having issues getting their miner program to work, I'm going to show you an alternative mining program that will work for Mac and PC. Now, we have CG Miner and Diablo Miner. They both work for Mac and PC, but for some reason I was unable to get Diablo Miner to work. But the Mac guys, I would suggest trying this anyways. Now, I'm going to show you CG Miner. It's not as nice looking as GUI Miner, but it'll get the job done, and it's a great alternative if you can't get GUI Miner to work, especially if you're on a Mac. So here's GUI Miner. It's already running. So this is what it looks like when it's all set up and running. So I'm going to show you how to set this up from scratch. So I'll close out of here, and I'll launch CG Miner. When CG Miner launches, it's just this black command prompt window. It's pretty basic, it might scare some people, but it's not that confusing. So let's get started. Everything I'm going to show you with CG Miner is going to have to do with Slush's pool, because that's the pool I'm in, and that's the pool that I showed you how to set up in the previous video. So it's asking us for a URL, and the URL for Slush's pool is the following. stratum.bitcoin.cz colon 3333 
we just click on enter it's going to ask us for a username now it's not asking us for the username to log in it's asking us for the worker login and password so i've already logged into my account here at mining.bitcoin.cz i've already created my workers and i'm going to type in this information for the username and i want to make a quick side note this is case sensitive, so see how this is a capital H and a capital R? It's very important that I do capital H and capital R. Click on enter, it's gonna ask me for a password. I'll just put in this one, two, three password and click on enter. Now it's going to take just a second for this whole thing to get going, but you can see that it's working and there it is. Now our miner is up and running and you can see that we have some information displayed here and it's just a little difficult to see, but it is all here. So. We can see our GPU, we can see uh, what our mega hash or kilo hash per second is. Right now I already have GUI miner running, so this isn't really going to do much for me. You're probably wondering, well, how this doesn't really look like anything. How do I keep track of anything? Well, you can see here that we have some information that will just uh, thread up for us. And what we really want to do is go over here to our account and this is where we're going to keep track of all of our workers, uh, what they're doing, uh, what the mega hash per second is, uh, just everything about our workers, and then of course all of our uh, Bitcoin information as far as where we want Bitcoins to be deposited, uh, when they will be sent, how much Bitcoin I need to accumulate before they're sent to my Bitcoin wallet. So I really should change this to like 0.00001. That way I just get things sent to my wallet. Oh, it looks like it's 0 0.01. So set that back to 0 0.01. And yes, so this is where you're going to keep track of your status and basically your progress and how far along you are at mining. So this little program right here, CG Miner, that's how you get it going on Slush's pool. And this can now just be running in the background of your computer and you can just forget about it. So that's how you set up CG Miner. And like I said, it works for Mac and PC. Now, of course, I highly recommend GUI Miner. I think this program is awesome. It works great. It's so easy to set up. And I showed you how to set it up in part one. So if you can use this, definitely use GUI Miner. So that wraps up part two of the Bitcoin for Beginners video series. In part three, I'll be going over pools in a little bit more detail. We'll talk about which pool you should join and why. We'll also take a look at the Bitcoin market and where the currency may be headed in the coming months, years. I'll also show you how to exchange your Bitcoin into cold hard cash because that's something that a lot of people were requesting for. So with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in part three.